Hey guys, hello, hello, hello. Wonderful to see you. Come on in. This is uh, it's going to be a quick word. I pray that it's going to bless you. Uh, this is going to be super quick. Uh, so come on in. As you do, please tap the hearts. Go ahead and swipe to the right on an iPhone. Swipe up. Hey, hey, hey. Swipe up on an Android device. That will allow you to share on all of the platforms. And I thank you in advance for the shares. Good afternoon, Becky Mine. Hey, uh, Dreaming Charm. God bless you. God bless you as you're coming in. Red Phoenix Woman, great to see you. Margaret, beautiful Margaret with those gorgeous, uh, pretty eyes. Uh, wonderful to see so many of my familiar friends. Jessica Rodriguez. Hello, hello, pretty girl. Wonderful to see you. God bless you. God bless you. This is going to be super quick. Come on in. Come on in. Uh, you know what? Let me flip the camera. Let's do this. Hey, everybody. Wonderful to see you. God bless you. God bless you as you're coming in. Uh, this is going to be a very quick broadcast. I actually have a coaching appointment in 20 minutes, so we got to hit this thing hard, but I really know in my spirit, and I just have it on such strong authority from the Lord, that this message is going to be crucial, crucial for somebody. This message is going to be so uh, vital for you to hear. It's going to speak to, for some of you, it's going to speak to your immediate situation. It's going to give you immediate encouragement, immediate clarity. It's just going to encourage you. And for others, it's going to be what you need to know going forward because amen can we agree right now that there are so many people under the canopy of this ministry that are really going higher than you've ever been listen this is part of what we're doing it's part of what we're doing together it's all about salvation it's all about your relationship with jesus it's all about going deeper in your walk with god it's all about going a uh, further into your intimate connection and your personal intimacy with the lord but God made it very clear to me as well. It is also about helping as many people as I can as we solidify your salvation, as we solidify your relationship with Christ, as we solidify who you are in God. It is also about revealing and identifying your purpose, releasing um all of the generational blessings that have been withheld from some of you due to generational curses that have been in place. It's about getting you ready and positioned for breakthrough into greatness, into your own personal greatness in the Lord. Uh, so that's part of what we're doing. We're getting ready to go higher. We're getting ready to go into our own personal breakthrough. And breakthrough is different for each and every one of us. Amen. But the Lord made it very clear to me that this message message is going to be relevant for so many people. I mean, I, can I tell you, I really feel the weight of the anointing. I feel the weight of the anointing. That's how important this is going to be for some of you. Once again, it's going to be vital for you to hear right now because of what you're going through. And for others, it's going to be vital for you to know because of where you're about to go. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Uh, anytime I have any doubt in my mind, that these messages are important, or if I'm ever tempted, please listen, please listen. If I'm ever tempted to put any of this off, you know, like if I look at my calendar and I start thinking, well, jeepers, I'm busy today and I've got back-to-back -back appointments and I don't even know where I'm gonna find time to brush my teeth, just kidding. Uh, but when I start thinking that way, the Lord brings me into submission very quickly. Here's how he does it. Number one, the last coaching session I had right before this right before this broadcast, this wonderful woman of God, and I'm going to respect her privacy. I won't say her name, but this wonderful woman of God uh, told me how she had been walking her dog one afternoon. She'd been out walking her dog, and she had been praying about something very, very specific. And she went inside, she came back from walking the dog, she went inside, she checked up her, checked her Instagram account. She wasn't even following me at the time. She said, I don't even know how I found you. I just kind of bumped into your account. And there it was, you prophesied and you said something that spoke directly to what I had just prayed about. It was so specific. And she said, JoLynn, that's when I knew right away that not only was God really listening to me, but he was answering my prayer. And she said, I was, you know, totally, you know, all in from that point forward. And that continues to happen. The last post, and by the way, I'm not bragging on me, I'm bragging on God. 
It's all about the Lord because trust me, he could use a squirrel to deliver these messages if he wanted to. I swear to God, it's not about me. I, I, I'm not puffed up whatsoever. I have a healthy fear of the Lord. He could use a cat if he wanted to. He could use a, 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 a rock if he wanted to. All right. So, um, but, but that sort of thing happens all the time. So if I ever am tempted to say, all right, I'm busy. I'll put this on my calendar. I'm going to write it up. We'll put, no, I can't do that. When the Lord gives me one of these messages, it's got to be, it's got to be released immediately because there's going to, this is bothering me so much. Hold on. Okay, better. Sorry, guys. Um, but it's, it, it must be released immediately because I know that there's going to be somebody it's going to bless. Somebody's going to be helped. Amen. All right, let's pray super quick. And then we got to get into this word because I now have 15 minutes. Pray for me. Y'all know I'm long winded now. Okay, so pray for me. I got 15 minutes to do this. Let's pray very quickly. Spirit of the living God, we come before you on today, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. And we just, we come with humble hearts, God, but we also come boldly to your throne and we give you glory, Father God. And we just praise your holy, holy name in the name of Jesus, oh God. And we thank you for making a way for us to come to you. And we thank you for making a way for us to be redeemed. And we thank you for all that you have done for us, God, all that you're about to do for us, God, in all the things that you're already working on, all the things that are going on behind the scenes, all the solutions that are in progress for us right now. Lord, we just praise you, God, because we know that you are working on things for us and you love us and you're going to blow our minds at the personal level to which you're going to answer many of our prayers. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. We praise you. We worship you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. All right, let's 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 do this quick. If you have not yet shared this, please do so. Swipe to the right on an iPhone. Swipe up on an Android. That will allow you to share on all the platforms. I thank you for the shares. Uh, God bless you all. If you want to take notes, uh, feel free to do so. And, you know, there might be some things that you want to write down. Um, I was, I'm actually going to make my daughter listen to this and, and take some notes later because I know this is going to bless her. But if you want to just focus on the word, that's totally fine. Kick back, listen. I'll leave this up for the replay. You'll be able to go back and, and listen in for a second time around if you want to, okay? But let's go ahead and get right into it and get some tea. Hold on. So addicted to green tea. You gotta try it, green matcha tea. You gotta try green matcha tea with honey. Oh my gosh, it's the best. All right, so in this season of widespread elevation, in this season of widespread elevation, you are getting ready to go to the next level, no. No, that's not a general statement. And I understand that a lot of um, so-called prophetic people or, or, you know, maybe they are prophetic, I don't know, but I understand that a lot of people say that. And unfortunately, it's been a very overused statement. But can I tell you something? I'm not making a statement. I'm prophesying over the people under the canopy of this ministry that many of us uh, are getting ready to go to the next level. Now, uh, Many times when we when we hear, okay, the next level, everybody immediately, well, not everybody, but a lot of people immediately equate that with finances. They immediately equate that with financial payout or financial blessing. But how many know that the next level is tailor-made for each of us? It all depends on who you are. It all depends on what you are ready for. It all depends on how deeply and how um, completely you've worked your process. Please catch that. How deeply you've worked your process. Because a lot of people stay angry. A lot of people stay offended. A lot of people stay mad. A lot of people stay jealous. A lot of people just stay sedentary. 
Sorry, I'm all in your business. And so you, you're not working your process and then an opportunity comes around and the Lord looks at you and it breaks his heart, but he says, I can't do it for them. They're not ready. I can't give it to them. They're not ready. I know that they won't handle it right. I know that they won't store it properly. I'll catch you on the flip side. We're going to catch you, you know, next time around. But that's, that's the deal. So elevating to the next level is a very individual thing and the Lord tailors it to each one of us. For somebody, it might mean receiving a financial payout, a large sum of money to steward so they can seed businesses and support ministries and also support themselves. For others, it may mean getting well, kicking the, the illness out of your body for once and for all, being 60, 70 years old and feeling like you're 40 or 50, looking like it too, and having one heck of a testimony. Uh, for others, it may be uh, writing the book that's going to help a lot of people. For others, I mean, so you get the point, it's different for everybody. But many of us, many of us are getting ready to go to the next level. Maybe it's marriage for you. Maybe it's going to be that you're finally gonna get your Boaz or you're finally gonna get your Ruth. Some of you are going to be getting married in the season to come. Some of you, your marriage is going to suddenly be restored. Some of you, you're going to have your family restored. Your kids are gonna start acting right. They're gonna to come to the Lord. They're gonna uh, wanna to pursue their destiny. All of a sudden, your family's just gonna have some kind of unity and cohesion that you've never had. So the next level looks different for everybody. But here is why some people are not going to be happy for you when they see you be blessed. And I know that's a horrible thing to say, isn't it? Is it? I mean, can I just be real? Can we keep it 100 real quick? I can't stand the fact that I even have to talk about this. I do. I can't stand the fact that we even have to talk about this. But when the Lord gives me the, a topic like this and he says, listen, because a lot of people are going to go into their personal elevation and they're going to encounter some things and you need to show them from the Bible that this is nothing new. You need to show them from the Bible uh, how to handle it and why it's happening so that they don't lose their minds, so that they don't get angry, so that they don't become offended, so that they don't just, you know, get off wonky because when somebody doesn't like you when somebody takes it upon themselves to just say nasty things to you they don't even have to it's like dude why did, why did you even feel the need to say that you didn't have to say it at all now I know that you got a little demon sitting on your shoulder making you do all kinds of wonky things but dude you don't have to even do the things that you're doing you don't have to attack me the way that you attack me uh and the Lord says, you're going, I need you to reveal to people why this happens and what's up, okay? As you go forth, as you come into your season of blessing, some people are going to immediately question your character. They're going to question your character. They're going to question your uh, viability. They're going to question your, uh, uh, is, she, is he or she qualified to be doing this? Uh, what, what, did, what did you do before? Can I see your resume? When the Bible shows us very, very clearly, number one, God loves an underdog. Number two, the Lord never sent nobody to Bible college. Number three, he can take a stuttering uh, anger management uh Backing myself into a verbal corner here. I'm talking about Moses, right? But he can take somebody who has an anger management issue and he's got rejection issues and he's got all kinds of stuff and he's got self-esteem issues and he can turn him into a hero for a nation. So God does not call the qualified. He qualifies the people he calls. So he looks for attributes in you that would qualify you. He looks for ingredients in you that he can work with. But what you're going to find happening is a lot of people around you are going to get like, mm, I don't, I don't, I just don't really see it. I mean, sure, I mean, I guess if that's who God wants to use, but I don't really see it. I mean, <laughs> and they're going to get snaggletoothed about it and they're going to get snaggletoothed about it, right? 
And they're going to say, is she qualified? Is he qualified? And I don't know if you saw this on Instagram. I, I don't even know if it was last night or the night before. And I would counter that with this. Do they even know you? Do they even? I, I, listen, maybe they knew you back in the day. Maybe they were there when you had your 19-year-old breakdown. Maybe they were there when your first marriage crumbled and you drank way too much wine. Maybe they know you from back in the day. But I don't know how to break it to them. You know, that Romans 12, 1 and 3, man, that's a, that's a serious principle that the Lord has at work. You are a brand new creature. You transform yourself by the renewing of your mind when you get with Jesus. So unless they've been with you lately, unless they have sat with you and, and, and had a conversation with you, uh, they probably don't know you because your growth game is strong. When you get with God, you get with growth. When you get with God, you get with expansion. When you get with God, you get with personal evolution. And to be with Jesus, man, you're going to have a strong growth game. So do they really even know you? That's number one. Okay. Number two, I have no notes. Um, but I'm just going up. Believe it or not, I'm going, up, I'm going up with some graphics that I designed that I'm going to be posting at some point, probably later or tomorrow. All right. So number two would be this. Here it is. You ready? This is horrible, but we got to talk about this. The reason that you're going to find, this is horrible, but the reason you're going to find that as you become successful, and once again, listen to me, sweetheart, I promise you that when I say success, I'm not a prosperity prophet. I'm not, I'm not preaching, you know, success. I'm, the success is health. Success is, um, yeah, it can be personal wealth. It can also be a happy family life. It can also be a thriving relationship with the Lord. It can also be walking in your purpose. There are many different definitions to success. But when you begin to walk in your personal brand of success as designed by the Lord for your life, according to his will for your life, did you catch that? When you begin to walk in God's will for your life, let me say that again. When you begin to walk in God's will for your life, which means your personal brand of success, unfortunately, many of you are going to find that strangers are happier for you than people who know you. Unfortunately, many of you are going to find that perfect strangers are happier for you Perfect strangers uh, support you, celebrate you more than some of your own friends, friends, frenemies, and some of your own family even too. And that, that is a very unfortunate reality. Let's go to the Bible for this, okay? John 7 and 5. John 7 and 5. We, oh man, I tell you what. There's so much that we could unpack out of this one scripture. There's so much to unpack out of it, but I, I gotta, I'm already late. I'm, honey, if you are my 2 o'clock appointment and you're on this, I love you. We will have your full session. But I gotta finish this real quick. Um, John 7 and 5, we're just going to go into this very, very quickly. It's, it's talking about Jesus now. Jesus himself, and it says, for even his brothers did not believe in him. For even his brothers did not believe in him. Now, listen, there's a lot of speculation about this. There, I've read a lot of um, Bible commentary about this. A lot of Bible scholars have talked about this. Uh, and, and please don't email me any email saying, well, you, that's heresy because I'm going to give you my own personal perspective. All right. I'm going to give you my personal perspective on this. Uh, I have three kids and they're all incredibly competitive with one another. They do. They are. They are competitive. Uh, they're always accusing favoritism. Well, how come she can, but I can't? Well, that's because you love him best. You always have. All right, so they're always, they, they, that's just sibling stuff. In fact, it's so cliche. Sibling rivalry is so cliche that books and movies have been made about it. They grew up with him. 
it was they, it was in, it was an environment where there was a family-owned business. They were carpenters, right? So they probably worked with their dad. They knew him when he grew up. Uh, they they might have been around when he was just you know eating around the dinner table. They saw all they saw his humanity. Okay, now he never sinned, but they saw his humanity. Imagine what some of them had to be thinking and feeling when all of a sudden he is the foretold messiah whoa what no man that's that's my brother shut up shut up okay that's my brother no but there it is john 7 and 5 even his brothers did not believe in him even his brothers did not believe in him mark 6 and 4 mark 6 and 4 but jesus said unto them a prophet is not without honor. A prophet is not without honor, except in his own country and among his own kin and in his own house. So don't be surprised. Don't be surprised if the people in your family just can't find it in their hearts to celebrate you. Don't be surprised if you are more celebrated and supported uh, in the next town over or in another country than where you come from. And I'm going to tell you why. I, 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 can I tell you something? I'm going to expose this. I'm going to expose this because it's, it's, a, it's a spirit of jealousy, but it's also a spirit of insecurity. And I'm going to expose and rebuke it right now. The reason is this. Because they have a hard time stomaching and swallowing the fact, please listen, they have a hard time stomaching and swallowing the reality that you come from the same place. You come from the same place. You were in the same family. You were born in the same town. You come from the same place. But there you are, and they're still in the same place. That's it. That's it in a nutshell. There you are going to the next level, being used by the Lord, stepping into your destiny, shifting into your purpose, doing relevant things with your life, a man of substance, a woman of substance, doing relevant things, making a name for the Lord. Clearly the hand of God is on you. Clearly the favor of the Lord is on your life. But you came from the same place. And they're still in the same place. And that's a hard pill to swallow. That's a bitter pill to swallow. So I just want to encourage you that when you see this happening, it happened to Jesus, it's going to happen to you, baby. Mm -hmm. It happened to Jesus, it's going to happen to you. The Apostle Paul told us that all scripture is beneficial for teaching. Now, critics of the Bible, I mean, there's so many things they say, which is... Oh, it's a scope unto itself. But one of the things that critics of the Bible say is that, you know, it's just a few books and like so much was left out. And what about the Apocrypha? And what about the Gnostic text? Listen, there's something in the Bible for everything and everyone. You're absolutely correct. A lot was left out because God is selective and he only selected what he wanted. Deal with it, get over it and get into the book. Okay. And there's something in the Bible about each and every human situation you can think of. Let's look at a few. No, we don't have time. We don't have time because I'm already late for my appointment. We, we, we'll do that next time. I promise you. I promise you. Next time, well, maybe not next time, but super soon, we will do a scope where we look at um, just, just, just how current the Bible is. It's so current. It's so relevant. Oh, my goodness. It is literally like, um, it, it, is, it is a handbook for life. So the Lord knew 
that there is going to be situations like this, that we were going to have to deal with it. And he put this in the book. He put this in the book so that when you encounter this, when you encounter this spirit of envy working through your friends, when you encounter this spirit of self-insecurity working through your family members, you can remember these scriptures, and that's John 7 and 5, also Mark 6 and 4. You can remember those scriptures and say, you know what? I'm going to breathe through this. I'm going to declare victory over this. I'm going to rebuke this spirit working behind this behavior. And I'm going to remember that they rejected Jesus. It, the same thing is happening to me. He had to deal with it. I'm dealing with it. So there it is. All right. On that note, guys, I got to go. I pray that this blessed you. I love you all very, 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 very much. Um, and I pray that this blessed you. I'm going to post uh, something like this or to, something about this. Something like this. Something like I'm going to post something dealing with this topic on my uh, social media sites. If you're not following me on Instagram or Facebook, you got to come follow me, man. It's uh, Jolyn Whitaker Ministries on Facebook uh, and also on Instagram and also on Twitter. And I love you all very much. Come find me there. Come follow me there. I got to go. I'm, but can I tell you, I'm only five minutes late and that's actually really good for me. Like it's, we did this pretty quickly, I think. So on that note, God bless you. I just speak a blessing over you. Uh, and I just pray that you have a wonderful day. And we will see each other again soon. God bless you.